It's a little bit grainy on one of them, the right rear just a little bit. Trouble in turn one, one car hits the wall hard. Chuck Bell and Sterling Marlin get together. Bell backs into the wall. Sterling T-boned him coming into the turn. A hard hit here in the corner in turn one. Caution is on the speedway. It comes out at lap number 56. Both cars out against the wall down in turn number one. Let's go back to Joe Moore. Coming into the corner, they were side by side. Bound looked to get a little bit loose coming into the turn, and Marlin just kind of drifted right up into him. Bound hit the outside wall about halfway through this turn quite hard. Marlin was there with no place to go. He just kind of rode along with Chuck up to the outside of the racetrack, T-boned him into the corner. There's a lot of damage on the back end of Bound's car. He sits up near the exit of turn number one, back end in first, and then Sterling sits a little bit further up into turn number one. The front end and the right side of his car pretty well damaged. Sterling was running in ninth position when that accident happened, and Chuck Bowne appeared to be running back about 35th place, a lap down, but they both really took a hard shot down in turn number one. That's one of the most critical. We talk about turn two, the tunnel turn being the critical place here, but every driver really says the thing they worry about is going off into turn number one because at the end of this straightaway, they carry a speed of almost 190 miles an hour, and if you lose the car down there, you're carrying so much speed, you're going to bang that wall pretty solid. Sterling Marlin is out of his car. Let's go back down to Joe Moore. Yes, Sterling climbed out. Uh, he has practically no damage to the driver's side of the car. He's now walking over to Chuck's car to check on the condition there, and the safety people have just arrived at Chuck's car. We can't even see if he's moving around in the car because the front end, the hood, is bowed up on his Bobby Allison Ford, and so safety personnel now tending to Chuck, but again, Sterling looks to be in pretty good shape. And that's a tough place also, Barney, because we talk how the drivers do shift the automobiles there. Some shift going into the turn, some midway, some I'm coming out of the turn. It's a high-speed hairpin, the best way to explain it. Well, that hard crash down in turn number one still has us under yellow conditions. Let's go back to Joe Moore for an update there. Uh, Barney, the uh, safety personnel are all around uh, Chuck Bound's car working with him, uh, leaning over as if they're to be talking to him. It's quite a, a bit out of our sight here, and with the binoculars, I can barely pick out what's going on. But it looks like they have brought out some uh, hoses, the jaws of life, and they're attempting to cut the roof of the car to pull him out, so maybe fearing some injuries back or down neck injuries uh, and so the work continues here on the Bobby Allison Ford. So we'll keep you posted as to what goes on down there and any report we get on the condition of Chuck Bowne. Meanwhile Gary Montgomery at the care center anything on either Chuck Bowne or Sterling Marlin? Well the good news Eli is that both drivers walked out of the ambulance into the care center. There is still concern for Chuck Bowne. He was unconscious for quite a while. He is very very oozy as how they're describing it and they are preparing to airlift him to the Lehigh Medical Center. Now, the, uh, this is a really tragic thing. He is, again, we think he's all right, but the uh, Allison family, of course, very, very concerned after all the uh, things that have happened to them here at this racetrack. Not been a good racetrack for the Allisons yeah. over the years. Some of their uh, most serious problems have happened right here at Pocono, and let's hope the news will be good for Chuck Mowen. We're under caution at lap number 70. Again, it happened up in turn number four. Jimmy Spencer hit the wall up there, making contact apparently with another car, and they were working on Jimmy's car on pit road a moment ago. Let's see if we can get a report there. Well, they just come in and looked it over and sent it to the garage, so we'll have to check on it in there. 71 laps on the board. Rusty Wallace leads the leaders down the pit lane for service. Let's cover his stop. 3,800 RPMs as Wallace rolls down to his pit stall. Right behind him is Mark Martin. That is Jeff Gordon. Dale Earnhardt swings into his pit. Here comes Ricky Rudd. He's into his pit stall. Ted Musgrave, Waddy Dallenbach, Ernie Irvin, Kenny Schrader, all getting four tires and gasoline. Schrader had a great break on that last run. His window net came down, but he was able to put it back into place. And now they put a piece of tape on it to keep it there as Wallace rolls off the pit lane first. Right behind him is Ernie Irvin. Then comes Jeff Gordon. Dick Brooks. Well, Brett Bodine was in there. Two tires on that car and got him back uh, rolling again. Jeff Bodine was in also, and so was Todd Bodine, and they put four tires on those cars. Harry Gant was in. They serviced his car out. Loy Ellen's back in. They're still working on that car. As they got him serviced out, he drives away. Harry Gant seemed to stall the skull band.